Today's guest is behind the bench of the DCB Lumberjacks hockey program. Joining me now is Travis Ribchinski. Coach, let's just start with that very first step. How did you land uh, the head coaching position for Lumberjacks hockey? How did that first come about? Well, I uh, was a student athlete here in, uh, started in the fall of 1996 and um, just fell in love with our school and the program. And then I, I moved on to Concordia, Moorhead, and played Division Three there. And um, I ended up graduating in December of 2000. And this job sort of came open then. And I applied, and I was at the right place at the right time. And the rest is history. So, um, yeah, so I got, I'm starting my 20th season this year. Dang. So, uh, obviously, you're there all the time. Kind of wondering... From your perspective, what's unique about playing in the Botano Lumber Dome? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uniqueness is, I honestly feel it's sort of like an iconic arena now because all these old arenas are, are bypassing us and we're getting all these new ones. So I, I sort of feel we're like, a Fenway Park or Wrigley Field, you know, you can just feel the history when you go onto the ice. Um, you also feel the chill. So um, it's it's funny when people have never been there on those really cold days and they just can't believe how cold it is sometimes. But we get used to it. And, um, yeah, and when, especially when we get our student body at games being loud and, and it's a really fun atmosphere. Yeah, so you guys have a home ice advantage, like a Lambeau Field Tundra, or what? Uh, sometimes, I think. Um, you know, I do I do think sometimes when other teams come here, they, on, especially when, those, when it's really cold, they don't want to be here, and we just have to try to jump on teams. But, but for the most part, I think a lot of kids growing up now never have played in many old arenas. So they, they really think it's cool. And then the other part of it is with pond hockey now, you know, outdoor rinks real popular. Some some kids just feel like it's sort of like an outdoor rink sometimes. So um, it's, you know, but when we can get our fans going in there and when we, you know, at times over the years we've had a, a big horn that we have to get back when we score goals and it gets pretty loud in there and, and, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a real throwback. I really like it, man. So you said going into year 20, where have you seen the program kind of grow since you started? Well, the coach before me, Gary Warren, he was here many years, and uh, he really I, I set the foundation for it. And we just get people who love the game. That's what, you know, I, I hope hope we can get is guys who are good people and love the game and want to get better and you know we've had a few years where we've struggled but for the most part I'm pretty proud of how we, we handle things here sometimes it's tough recruiting kids to a rural area and when we don't have the best facilities you know with our ice doesn't get into October and like there's no weight room in the rink things like that it's tough, but we do the best. We do the best with what we have, and I don't know if I've made the program stronger. It's always been strong, and I think always will be when I leave here. It's just uh, we just got to keep getting good people in here. Part of that um, success was, of course, like national trips at each level that this team has been at. But um, obviously, this year was kind of tough on you guys trying to debut at a brand new level in national tournament. How difficult was it to get that news, uh, break it to the guys, and ultimately, what kind of a motivator does this cancellation serve for the team that figures it could have contended? Yeah, you know, it was it was pretty tough with it with it being new. Like before, when we go to the national tournament, a lot of those years we knew we'd be going before the puck dropped on the start of the season. And uh, that's what was so special about last year is not many people gave us a chance and this, the team got way better as the year went on and 
we surprised some people at regionals. I, I wasn't really surprised because I thought we had some good leadership and some good goaltending. And and if you looked at our games last year in the Division Two, we we could beat anyone we played, I believe. So I think when that, given the yeah. when given the news, though, to the guys, that was really hard because the excitement around here was nothing that I've seen since. You know, we won national titles and, and sort of got back to our glory after we had those years of struggling. So that was the hard part. And we had a lot of the town is really excited and alumni and, and all that. So so that part was really hard. And and I don't, I think it'll, you know, I think we have 12 guys back from that team last year, this year. So I, I think that's going to be a little motivation. But on the other end, we just hope we can get the season in as well. And I think that's sort of what kids are more worried about, whether are we going to keep playing games or is it going to be shut down like last year. And so, like, my motto this, this, uh, this year is just one week at a time because, you know, we, we could have our full schedule and – January, the team we were supposed to play against, so all of a sudden they have six guys out with COVID and we don't play. So so that's why I'm just sort of going week by week. But I think definitely the guys who are coming back want to get back to the national tournament, and, and we want to experience that. Some of the guys that have had this experience, I just wanted to ask you about I have a slight idea about who you might mention here. But uh, throughout your time and even maybe looking back at the program further than that, who have been, like, the best players and teams to suit up for the Lumberjacks? Well, I think that's a loaded question because I'm going to leave someone out. But I will, um, I will. you know, our, our biggest alumni, obviously, with the most success was Dustin Penner. And I was a rookie coach when I coached him. It was his second year here, my first year. He had just come off a, a broken leg, and I didn't know much about him. And he was still a young player, so he could go play juniors after here. Because uh, when he came to Botano, he was only 17. So as the year went on, he scored a lot of goals like from an- anywhere. He had that really good shot. And obviously, being a big guy, his skating wasn't, you know, pretty. But, but he was always a solid player. But, you know, looking back on that team, I thought we had two or three guys who were better players than him. And, and he was just a late, a late bloomer. So I, I just, you know, we get so many kids like that in our program who are late bloomers and just blossom. A couple of reasons why is when they come, they, they get into a weightlifting program. So, you know, they, they put on some muscle. Like we've had kids who, um, you know, put on 30 pounds from when they started here till they left here and, and um, as the, the good kind of pounds, muscle. Uh, we've also had, you know, so lifting weights, also skating every day and playing at a higher level from where they come from. People don't realize how big that is when you are when you skate at a higher level every day. I know out there in youth hockey, now everyone wants all these games and they want to play 50, 60 games a year. But if you have good development and good practices, you're still going to get better. And, and that's just sort of what we do in a that's been my motto for a long time is just get better every day. Um, but some of the other guys, like uh, we, we're just having our two players from my 03 team get inducted in the Hall of Fame this season uh, with Ryan Friesen from Altona, Manitoba, and Rob Harabic from Kenora, Ontario. And they both were solid players here. Ryan had Division One offers to go play. So, you know, we've had some really good good guys over the years and I just think back like with our our good teams we've had really good leadership and you know those guys carry uh, the long you know carry carry the torch a long way and show the guys coming up how it is so yeah I wish I had some rosters in front of me because I don't want to you know discredit anyone but we've had a, a number of very good players here over the years and and it's uh it's been a lot of fun coaching them. What do you see as the big picture hockey-related goal for these guys that come to 
spot now because, I mean, you have dudes like Dustin Penner and those other guys that moved on to bigger schools. Is it just like the bigger schools or can you literally say like anybody can make the show out of here or what? No, I don't, you know, we don't really push like you're going to be the next Dustin Penner. And, and, you know, looking back, part of me, I wish maybe I should have done that because, you know, but I just don't recruit that way. I, I, you know, we have guys who come here and want to move on to the highest level they can. But after playing two years and going to school, you know, some of them want to just, you know, end up being doctors and lawyers, things get on with their careers and their, their schooling where we've had other guys, I believe who just come here to play hockey, but they are getting an education. So, so that part's um, good. And then they move on. But I would think like when we were in Juco, we could give scholarships. So we were getting some better players, I would say. And that was their goal is to move up to division three or ACHA division one. Now I don't see that as much. I see guys wanting to move on and play somewhere, but it's not like, hey, I'm going to come here and go Division three. Um, they just want a good fit for school, and, and especially I think we've been getting younger players here right out of high school a lot, and and those kids, you know, just want to get a good experience playing hockey and get some schooling in, and and hopefully we can move them up. But I don't know if the goal is like, hey, I'm going to come to Botno and then in five years play professional hockey. You know, there's been guys with opportunities like that and and hopefully it works out. But in the most case, we just want to make sure that they get a degree. I'm pulling a couple of these questions from some of the research we did or I did for this bio, or interview from your bio here. Kind of wondering what kind of coaching tools have you used in order to help guys become A, better players, and then better people by the time their careers at DCB end? Um, I don't know. I've been real fortunate, first off, to have some pretty good assistant coaches over the years. Uh, Ron Gullett, he was an All-American goalie here, and, and me and him really worked well together in my early years, and then he, he sort of followed his kids uh, with sports. And uh, Jeremy Tweed was one of my assistant coaches. And then now I have uh, Corey Gorder, who we've been together, I think, seven years now. And so it's good to have the assistant coaches, so I rely on him a lot. Um, he's a pretty good buffer and gets, you know, is real personable to the players where maybe I'm not as personable to them um, as I should be sometimes. But, you know, I just, uh, you know, he's sort of like the the buddy of them and, and – um, but we also, like, I think one thing that we have is we have a pretty good plan in place, and our goals are the same. Like, we want to give players good experiences here. We want to, like, show them, like, when we go on the road, we'll go do, uh, you know, go see, like, when we used to go to Green Bay, we'd go to Lambeau Field, and we'd show a lot of these kids different parts of the country just because especially with our Canadian content, a lot of those kids have never been down to the States and, and see this stuff. So, so we give them good, good opportunities to, to see, see America, I guess, and see some different places. Uh, we have a plan where, you know, we do a lot of skills earlier in the year and uh, then, you know, work our way to the end of the year where we're just, you know, just uh, flying in practice and we shorten our practices up. So we have a good plan of hockey-wise what we want to do, and then also in the weight room as well. We, you know, we, we do a lot of heavy lifting early on, and then we do maintenance during the year, and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But for the most part, I, I think we have a good plan. One thing that you know I'm not afraid to do is talk to other coaches and, and steal ideas from them, and I've been very fortunate to to know some pretty good coaches over the years and, and just ask them their opinions. And, you know, I can call them anytime and, and ask them stuff. So, so we rely on, we do a lot of that as well. Like, Hey, our power play is not working any ideas. So, you know, and then we just want to keep players accountable. And that's the big thing right now with, I think young kids, you know, like, they think, well, if I miss class and I don't miss anything, homework or, or that, 
I can miss the next day and then they just get into habits and and that's one thing that is really hard to break is kids don't realize how important it is to just show up and do the work and, and you know so we try to relay little messages like that like hey you know you're gonna have a bad day 10 years from now in your career and but you got to go, go to work still and you know just just little messages like that that hopefully will help them in life and and you know I, I think a lot of kids go, geez, that's not going to matter to me. Like, And then 10 years down the road, they'll be like, geez, that's what coach is talking about. So, you know, so a lot of those, just those little life lessons that we try to do. So, you know, it, it's sort of the big picture of just becoming a better person while you're here and, and a better hockey player. Also on the lighter side of things, when it comes to your coursework at Dakota College at Botnow, I'm kind of curious, uh, how do you go about teaching canoeing as a class? Um, <laughs> I, I think I've done the canoeing class almost 10 years now. And, and honestly, I don't teach it. It's an activity class. So I make sure people know that, Hey, we're just going out here and doing it for fun. And safety is the biggest thing for me. And we do a safety class before we go out there and then it's just go explore on your own. So, so I would I would use teaching canoeing very loosely. It's more like I'm more like I'm supervising canoeing, but it's actually a pretty fun class. We go up to Pelican Lake, uh, where Camp Metagoshi is. They've been really good to us, and it's just a beautiful setting there. And as as long as the weather cooperates, uh, our students really have a fun time with that class. I yeah, I just I just had to know seeing that on the sheet, Travis, and get your get your take on that. I bet a bunch of hockey players might be taking that class. Actually, we don't. I don't. I've only had one hockey player ever take it, so um, I think they they get a credit for playing hockey already, so they don't really need any physical education credits. And um, we get a lot of wildlife students, and and like I said, it's just a fun class. Once someone takes it, they usually take it the second year as well. Okay, so it never comes down where it's like, oh boy, Coach Ribchinsky is co- or is teaching his players; they might have an easy A. <laughs> yeah, no, and <laughs> it is an easy A though. You just have to show up. So there you go. So um, getting back to hockey here, uh, something brand new for Botno is going to be this women's hockey team that's coming up. Reed Lauk's getting ready to be the head coach of that. Uh, tell me a little bit about what the community's response has been. So far, I know it's early. We've gotten, like, the uniforms, coaches, first couple of recruits. Uh, so far, kind of what's the buzz about that going forward? Yeah, I know. I'm pretty excited about it. I have two daughters who play hockey, so I really hope that it grows the game in our community for uh, girls' hockey. As, like, my daughter is sixth grade right now, and she is the only girl in, I think, six and fifth and sixth grade who play hockey. Um, so we're really excited to hopefully it'll get more girls playing. I've always, I think we've always been known as a hockey school with the guy's success. So this just really adds to it. And then being Reed coaching, he was a really good player for me and a really good person. So I'm really excited that he's taken the, the lead in, in the girls team here and and then you know we've had I think there's five or six local girls that are going to be playing on the team so the community has been really excited about it and I I just it's it's going to be a win-win for everyone unfortunately with the COVID stuff I know they've lost a few games and with some Canadian teams so hopefully that this all goes away but it's yeah it's it's pretty special to you know, I feel a part of it because I'm I'm here and I've helped a few of the girls train this summer uh, with the high school girls here, and it's just it's going to be pretty exciting when they they have their first game and when they hit the ice. I know the the students are here now, and we had a big hockey meeting the other day, and it was just great to see all the all the new students, and it's just going to be I I, I think really fun working together with Reed and like we're, we're planning to do some practices together, things like that, some skill stuff and 
just another person on campus here to talk hockey with will be will be really good for me. So, yeah, I, I just can't wait till they play. And, and I think with the girls coming in, we're going to be pretty successful off the bat. Uh, two reasons. We, we have a lot of depth, and a lot of the, I think the girls' teams in D2 won't have the depth as we do. And then also with our school sponsoring it, because some of these teams that are playing are just club teams where girls have to pay, you know, $1,500 a year to play, things like that. Well, we're a varsity sport on our campus with both men's and women's hockey. So I think they're going to be pretty successful and, and you know, go to nationals and, and have a good chance of winning, winning nationals. Uh, maybe not this year, but in the future. So it, it's going to be a really big, big deal on our campus. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome to see the girls hit the ground running too. I mean, down at Minot State, you got one team that's club, one team's varsity, and the girls and guys are both competing for national championships. And it'd be special for uh, the Jacks programs to do that as well. Uh, wish you the best of luck in that, Travis. And uh, yeah, this has been a really good interview, and I really appreciate your time, man. Good luck uh, this season. I hope you uh, can go week to week just fine, like we said, and just, uh, yeah, have a great year. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, we have everyone here now who who's coming and we're just can't wait to hit the ice and hit some training here. And, um, you know, I appreciate all the coverage that you do. And, you know, we'll have to get you up to Botno here a couple more times this uh, this winter for sure, Ben. Absolutely. I'll bundle up for that. That's uh, Travis Ripchinski, head coach of Lumberjacks Hockey.